today, after four years of foundational work, we're pulling the future forward. Introducing a brand new category of software. It's a browser that browses for you. We're combining the three essential elements of the internet, a web browser, search engines, and web pages into a single cohesive tool, all designed to save you time and uh, okay. save you time and save you. Okay. sorry. <sighs> we started filming this video like every other tech announcement we've ever seen, because that's what you do when you have something big you want to share with the world, right? Two Bravo, take one, Mark. God, it sounds like we're going to space. Here is our vision. It's really simple. You tell ARC what you're trying to do, and ARC will go and do it for you. Why go to a search engine when we can bring the links directly to you? Why read a web page when we can read 10 in the same amount of time? What you're about to see today are four brand new features that tease. But despite our best efforts, this format just didn't feel quite right. But despite our best efforts, this didn't feel quite right. How was that? Cool. From the top or just from this section? Uh, from, the from the section. Okay, cool. A week before launch, we invited some ARC members in Los Angeles to get a first look at what we mean by a browser that browses for you. I've never done this before. So, uh, neither have we. If you actually say, hey, blank page, forget what a browser is, a search engine, how do we bring you what you want as quickly as possible? I think we can do better. You say, true detective. Season four, trailer, shift enter, and we're gonna go out and search the internet for you, and we're just gonna bring it back right to your site. Wow, how amazing. <laughs> and so you tell ARC what you're looking for, and we'll go grab it for you. As we were talking about before, preparing for like, how do we do a tech keynote? Well, let's rewatch the videos of Steve Jobs mm -hmm. unveiling the Macintosh, iPhone, what's what's another one we can, am I blanking? iPhone? The iPad. iPad, there we go. And just instead of pressing enter, you just hit shift enter. And it's going to go out to the internet and it's going to bring four videos right back to your sidebar. Whoa. We got the Macintosh, we got the iPod, we got the iPhone, and we got the iPad right in my sidebar. I didn't have to do four different searches. It's your agent. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's pretty amazing. Because essentially, that's what you would have an intern do. Search engines make a whole lot of money when you stop at that middleman web page and just check out a few ads really quickly. But if we start and just say, what does the person want and how do we do it as quickly as possible? Just put it right there when you ask for it. Let's say one was considering to buy a Vision Pro mm -hmm. for $3,000 <laughs> to strap a screen to their face. Folder of Vision Pro reviews, because if I'm gonna spend that much money, I, got, I gotta make sure it's really worth it. So I tell Eric what I wanted, voila. Yeah. Now I did it go out and browse for me. It brought it back and made a folder. It titled the folder and I got five different reviews in here, including from Reddit. I can just click through and, and quickly check it out. Stop it. <laughs> Isn't that wild? That's, oh that's a game changer feature. The things that it can do for Some you. would say or like, Josh is pretty good at explaining things, much? but sometimes you just need to land the point. So I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking the same thing. If this is such a brilliant idea, why has no one ever done it yet? Money. It always has to do with money. So rewind, rewind. It's 2008 and Google, the protagonist of our hero's story is this. And thanks to AdWords and Sheryl Sandberg, their search engine is now this. Moo, I'm a cow. And being the smart, very observant people that they are, realized if you also owned this, you could point a hell of a lot more eyeballs back to this. So cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Chrome couldn't do anything that decreased the amount of times that you searched in this box. But aren't there other web browsers? What about them? Excellent question, to see if they make their money by making Google the default search engine and their URL bar. So even when it has nothing to do with search, it all goes back to search? And the whole web stopped evolving. I rest my case. What's gonna happen next? <laughs> <laughs> When I 
talked about the idea of like, if you combine a browser, a search engine, and a web page, and you blend it into a seamless tool. Mm -hmm. But this feature is kind of that to its extreme. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, um, I want a reservation at either Lilia Llama Inn or King's uh, Imperial. Why don't you just tell Arc what you're looking for, and then it will go, and it will go browse the web for you, and it will do whatever it needs to do. It'll click on whatever buttons. It'll go wherever it needs to go, mm -hmm. and then bring it right back to you. So this is it telling you all of the places on the internet it went. Stop it. Click on it. Wow. You'll notice it's already filled it in. Okay. So I just hit reply like it's a WhatsApp thread. I say, are a few uh, Chifa dishes that I might consider cooking. Okay, you're thinking with the internet and look what it did. So it's like, it's really did its research. Mm -hmm. But let's just say I'm like, all right, um, a rose chofa. Like that sounds really delicious. Like I want to make that. It went a step further. It's now gonna go out to the internet and it's gonna say, all right, if you actually wanna make this dish, well, you're gonna need a bunch of things. You're gonna need recipes, you're gonna need ingredients, you're gonna need, you might want a video of, of like how to make it. And now you just have this really clean ingredient list, recipes. If you're like, I don't really trust that because who made this for me? Great, here are three, other, here, New York Times cooking, go check the New York Times cooking one. And if you're like, all right, I'm in, cooking step-by-step -step re step recipe. I just, so just imagining delivers everything. my husband is gonna be so much more calm. <laughs> Cause you know, like it- The decision-making. The decision-making has like 20 tabs deal. open looking for reviews for things. Let's go try it the old way. Mm -hmm. Winter soup recipes. What does it bring back? How does it bring back soups? It brings back listicles. Mm -hmm. it brings back a bunch of listicles. But let's just say, that's not, all right, it's an extra click. What's the big deal? You're used to it. Well, again, I got a pop-up asking me to sign in. Got to scroll down a bunch. And look, all this SEO content, just so it can rank highly in search results. I keep going down, I keep going down. Oh, big advertisement. And I go all the way down and I got one soup recipe. But let's just say it's a perfect suggestion and I want Swedish meatball soup. And I'm back to the same thing. I got a bunch of social share buttons. Got to scroll down even more. Pin, don't forget to pin this recipe. <laughs> I got an auto playing video. I got an ad here, just another ad. And so, you know, you just tell us what you want and we go do, we go pull that stuff for 10 different soups at once and bring it right to where you are. We browse for you. So remember, there are three fundamental parts of the internet. There's the web browser. It's our container. There are web pages. It's the information, the photos, the videos, the text. And then there's the search engine, the compass, how we find out where we're going to. 1993, Mosaic Web Browser was the first portal to the internet. And there've been many since. After the web browser came the web pages. And it became a lot. We put a lot on the internet. And in 1998, two PhD students had this idea. What if you just typed into a box asking what you were looking for? And it would go through the trouble of wading through the internet to find exactly what you needed. And the system worked. In fact, it worked so well that our files started moving to the internet. Our applications started moving to the internet. Our shopping moved to the internet. This was a historical accident the way that this happened. And it's all starting to break. Out of nowhere, one of the greatest inventions of our lifetime appeared, LLMs. And they afford us the opportunity to start over, to take a web browser, a search engine, and web pages, and blur them together into a brand new category of software a new type of browser that browses for you, how it always should have worked. Throughout my day, I got this thing on me. And if I got a question, the first thing I do is I pull this out of my pocket. So this is Douglas Park. I remember like there was something about Santa Monica has a history of, I think it was like an airport or something. So all I do is I say, history of Douglas Park in Santa Monica and I ask it to go browse the web for me and find out like, what, what, what was it about Douglas Park? Like, what's the history of this place? It was something. Look, formerly a site for an aircraft factory and a movie studio lot. Tells me all about when it was constructed, tells me what it has here, tells me more about, okay, it was Douglas Aircraft Factory. In our new mobile app, you're gonna be able to ask a dumb question like, I don't even say dumb, but let's say like, okay, we're in this diner. Why are, like, what was this diner? Uh, what is the history of this place? Yeah. Instead of tapping search engine, you tap browse for me. 
and it's gonna go out and it's gonna read six different web pages on the internet for you. And then it is going to make you a custom web page just designed to explain what it is. <laughs> So this is Johnny's Diner. This is exactly where we are today. Uh -huh. It'll tell you the architectural style. It'll tell you where it's built. It's Crazy. been a bunch of films like The Big Lebowski and Reservoir Dogs. This is definitely my favorite feature because I did not realize how many dumb questions I have a day and how much time I waste. And it's a great example of how it is actually merging the three categories of software. Because in order to do this, I need a web browser, right? The whole thing is a web browser. That's a container. I need a search engine because I got to go read a bunch of websites about that. And then you also need web pages, obviously, because that's what has all the information. A browser that does the browsing for you, it needs all three of those things to bring you exactly what you want. Okay, so this is has nothing, this has nothing to do with AI, but it's the same idea of let us go do the browsing for you. What if you don't even have to touch your keyboard? I was like, this is my dream feature right here. What if it just knows, hey, you really like that blog. Whenever there's a new blog post, we're just gonna put it right in your sidebar. When there is a story about ARC, it just puts in there for me. So for example, this came in, I actually haven't read it. I'm not saying I endorsed the message. I hope it was a good review. <laughs> um, but that came in yesterday. Says so it looks like, promising. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> looks promising. But you're anticipating the behavior of like how we normally operate. We want to make a browser that browses for you. And sometimes that's because you tell us what you want and we go get it for you. But what if we can actually anticipate your needs and just bring it to you without you even touching your keyboard? Uh, another great example, you know, we use Linear and GitHub at work. So anytime oh. I get tagged in something, yeah. you can imagine you come back to Arc and it has created a yeah. much more dynamic feed of bringing the internet to you of the mm. things that really matter to you. Think about like, just let's say, let's say you were trying to make the best restaurant in the world. But all you could do is touch the interior design. You couldn't do the food, mm -hmm. and you had no control over the table service. It'd be really hard <laughs> to build the best dining experience. The browser is the interior design. It's the container. The reason we're doing this is not to build a noun like a browser. It is to end-to-end -end make your day on the internet better. That's why we're breaking out of just the browser. we got to think about your experience across all of it. Great day. If you're watching this right now, you can open up Arc and start using instant links right now. Uh, you also can pull out that phone in your pocket and search for Arc Search. Start using Browse for Me and everything else in our brand new default mobile browser. Live folders, this thing is coming really soon. If you are a company that makes pieces of software or a person that makes pieces of software and you wanna bring Arc alive with what you've built, please reach out as well. Um, we're gonna put the information on the screen. And then the, the, the final thing, Arc Explore, uh, Quite frankly, I don't even know if it's gonna be named that by the time you get it. It's coming soon. We're hoping in the next month or two, but we're still figuring out the details, so stay tuned. If you take one thing away from this today, it is not that it's ready, and it's not that it's done, it's that Act 2 just started. So as always, we will ship something new every week. We'll keep you posted, and um, yeah, have fun with it. Let us know what you think. Somewhere in Brooklyn, and all around the world, there are 70-something people dreaming up a better way to use the internet. Acts 2 begins today. And they, well, we know we couldn't do it without you. As for how to make a keynote, we still don't know. But we'll see you on the internet. One apple, <clears throat> six, six, come to market. Gotcha.